In this video, I'm going to give you a few tips in working with the section on interior design. The first thing I want to look at is the kitchen area and a couple of the objects that you'll, you'll be bringing into the kitchen. The first one is a refrigerator and when you go to place the refrigerator, I'll just choose 35 by 32 right-handed here. Uh, the thing I want to point out to you is if I click out in space and place this refrigerator, and then I'll just escape a couple times to deselect, you'll see that when I select the refrigerator that there's this little line back here on the top of the refrigerator. That actually represents the back of the refrigerator. So that'll help you place the refrigerator. You'll see if I do not flip this around and actually place it in here and double click on the arrow to look at the elevation, you don't see the doors, the refrigerator is backwards. So again, I'll go ahead and grab this refrigerator and you can just tap the space bar to flip it around. Really cool thing is you can see the text re-situates itself so you can read it from the bottom. And that line is to help you place your refrigerator and leave some space behind it. And the next thing I want to look at is the range hood. So the range hood's kind of difficult because when you go to place it, you can't see it. So I'll start with the 40 inch wide range hood. And you can see that as I'm moving my mouse around, I'm getting some temporary dimensions, but I can't actually see the range hood. And let's figure out why that is. So I'm gonna go ahead and click to place it here. I actually get the message down here at the bottom of my screen that none of these elements are visible. So I'm gonna go ahead and hit escape here a couple times, and I'm gonna switch to this little elevation view here. So here I can actually see this range hood. So why is it not visible? Remember the idea of view range, that in a floor plan, we come up four foot off of the level, which would be right around here, and we take a cut and we see everything below it. Now one exception to that is these upper cabinets are created in such a way that they will show hidden lines to indicate that there's cabinets above the view range. But in the case of this, range hood, as you can see, not only do I need to move it down to where it needs to go, but I also need to rotate it. So my recommendation to you is go ahead and drag it down to where it's just kind of at countertop height. That way when I switch back to my elevation view, or excuse me, my floor plan view, I can actually see the range hood. So now I can go ahead and rotate it, and it looks like the space bar is just going to mirror it for me, so I'm going to go ahead and choose the rotate command here and rotate it 90 degrees switch back to the elevation to make sure I rotated it the right way looks like I did so now before I move it up however back in this view I want to actually move it in towards the wall so now I know I've got it pushed up against the wall properly and now in this view I can select it and go ahead and drag it up and place it right underneath the cabinet. So again, when I switch back to the floor plan view, whoops, I won't be able to see it anymore, but I know that it's placed properly, and if I do a 3D view in here, I know that I'll be able to see that. One of the other things that we're gonna do in the interior de design section is to add in some railings, and I wanna show you a little tip on railings. It actually um, is mentioned in the textbook and it really applies more towards the house you're going to do after you finish up this section. So I'm going to go to the second floor plan. And actually before I do that, let's look at it this in 3D. So you might remember we cut an opening for the stairs, but we need to put in a railing around the stairs here. So when we created the stairs, rails were created automatically for us. In this case, we're going to actually choose the railing tool. So up here on the architecture tab in the circulation section, here's railing and I can choose a railing type. So rectangular should be what I have already in there. I'm gonna choose the pick lines option to pick some lines here. And then I'll trim those together. And then I'm actually gonna take this endpoint and stretch it over to where it would hit the other railing there. So I'll go ahead and finish, take a look at it in 3D, and now you can see that I've got the railing around my house. But what I really want to show you is how do you load in additional rails? Right now I have rectangular, I have this default new style which is a little different and then I also have the pipe. 
which is a little more of a commercial application, as you can see there. So I'm going to go ahead and switch that back to rectangular, but um, there are additional types of rails that you can bring in. They're a little different than other family types. Most family types, we load family and bring them in. Uh, this one, you've got to use more of a copy and paste method. So as your book tells you, there is a file of sample railings in Autodesk Seek. So I'm going to go to the Insert tab. And in the search box, I'm just simply going to type in Revit Samples. And that will bring up my browser and take me to Autodesk Seek. And one of the files in here is called Railing Samples. And then I'm going to go with just the newest version here, Revit 2010. Save selected to local and download. It's going to ask me to log in if I haven't already. So I'll go ahead and do so. And then what's a little different than the other families, typically on the other families we downloaded them and then we loaded them into the project. This one I'm just going to go ahead and open. Of course you could go ahead and save it to your uh, class folder if you think you want to add in some more railings. I'm going to have to upgrade the model here since it's an older version. So this will take a few seconds here. There we go. So now you can see that I have the railing file open. Several different types of railing in here. So if you find another railing type that you like, Let's say I like this handrail residential style here. Again, instead of loading it into the other one, you're going to do a copy and paste. So I'm going to select the railing and either use the Control C keyboard shortcut or come up and click on Copy to Clipboard here. Then I'm going to switch back into the project file that I was working in. It doesn't really matter which plan I do it on. I'll just come to the first floor and do it here. And then I'm either going to do Control V to paste, or I go back to Modify and choose Paste from the clipboard. Gives me a little message that there's some different styles, and that's OK. I'm going to click OK, and as you can see, it places a copy of the railing in there. So now that I have a copy of that railing in here, it can be deleted. It doesn't actually have to be on screen, but the style is in here now. So now if I switch back maybe to my 3D view, and I'm looking at the railing here, I can select the railing and I should have my new style available in my drop down list. So again I can even apply those to the ones on the stairs as well. So you're not asked to do that on this particular house but like I said as you get into the next project and you're working on your own house you might want to spruce up the railing a little bit and you can certainly do so it's just a copy and paste method instead of a load family method. So again, that's just a few tips on working with the interior design in Autodesk Revit.